I'm going to show you a couple of different projects with LED strips so you could have some lighting effects just like this. So let's go! I'm Tom Kovicek and I've been working on some projects with LED strips. In fact, with two different kinds of LED strips. One's just a simple 12 volt strip that I've done some projects on. This is the same strip that I showed you about a year ago for the LEDs. And uh, this is what's left of the spool right here. But this is a lightning effect that you could put on your model railroad. Now, right now, I'm using it with a Nano and a DF Player Mini. So, and I've used that in many projects, especially on the welder scene back here and some other things that I've shown you in previous videos. Finally, this week started working on it because I want to get rid of that lame thing that I have back here. Now, let me shut this off for a second. Now, back here, when I do live chats, I do a super, super chat with that lame strobe back there. That's not what this is. This is the thunder and lightning. If you remember, I used that welding sketch back here from Dave Bodner's sketch. I got the idea. He did one with thunder and lightning. The only thing different about this one is, and let me show you, the lightning comes first and then the sound. So there's the lightning and there's the sound. Well, right now I just have it hooked up to a speaker. On the DF Player Mini, there's two DAC terminals on there where you could hook that up to an amplifier and run that through either headphones or your stereo system so you could have really good sound on it. That is one of the projects and I'm gonna go through that in a minute and let me turn this other one on for you. The other project that I'm going to do I'm going to replace that strobe back there with this. Now this is right in front of me right now. Okay, it's, that, that's pretty bright. But, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it up in the ceiling where I have the other lights. Now that, uh, oh. <laughs> that's driving me crazy right in front of my eyes. I'm seeing spots all over the place right now. It's pretty bright. Each one of these LEDs has a WSA 2812B chip in there that can be programmed individually. So if you wanted to, you could have all 144 LEDs on here, a different color, coming on at a different time if you want to get that complicated with it. But I'm not going to get that complicated with it. I'm just going to strobe it for right now. Later on, I'll be putting a backlight in it like that right there and I'll be able to change it through my cell phone or I'll be able to go on the website and change it right there. I'll use my mouse and I could click whatever color I want. Now there are different variations of this. This one is a three pin. I also have a four pin which you could have more control on it and I'm using this right here with an Arduino Uno right now I got it hooked up because I'm getting ready to put this up in the ceiling. The best thing about Arduino is it is open source and you don't have to be a programmer to figure all this out. You just go on the internet and look up what you want to find as far as a project goes and you're most likely going to be able to find what you're looking for and that's how I found these right here. This is a pretty straightforward design. I'm using the the Nano and the DF Player Mini and all the connections on there are the same no matter how you do it. The only difference on this one when I'm finished with it I'm going to take these two off of here which go to the speaker the first and third pin and use the fourth and fifth pin and the ground the fourth and fifth pin is, and I'll show you a diagram of it, is the DAC terminals. And that way I'll be able to amplify the sound. Right now it's just going, it's using the internal amplifier on here. This is a MOSFET transistor right here, and that is amplifying the signal from pin number nine on the Nano. I'm using 12 volt on here, so I have 12 volt coming in on the input over here and as you can see I have the 12 volt jumper over to here the positive going on a nano one thing you have to remember is if you're using the external power supply 
and you want to reprogram what's on the Nano, you need to take this off the VIN pin so you're not applying power to the USB connector and the VIN pin at the same time. If you do that, you may burn this up. That's a word of caution right there. This first project came from one guy, one blog. Unfortunately, that's the only project that I was able to find from him. He's got one video on his YouTube channel and it refers to his web page. On his web page is where you could find a lot more projects in and he's got them hidden on the web page. But for some reason, he only put one of them on YouTube. Let's go over the code for the lightning. Here is the sketch now. This is from one guy, one blog, and here's the, it tells you uh, the different things that you will need on here. Here's his web page right here, and it brings up the library Arduino software serial and DF robot. Now, if you have not seen the DF robot or you don't know how to set up the DF robot yet, then you can go to an old video of mine, and I'll keep I'll put a uh, link in the description for that video. But anyway, you have to uh, have one pin for the LED pin, which goes to the MOSFET, and the busy pin number 12 goes to the busy pin on the DF player. 10 and 11 go to the receive and transmit, and everything else is self-explanatory, software serial, DF robot. All this is the setup for the DF robot right here all the way down to this point right here. This is common in every setup that you're going to use for the DF robot. This line right here, my DF player enabled DAC, I have it commented out right now because I'm not using the DAC pin, but if you want to uh, enable DAC, then you could delete these two slashes right there and leave it like this. Come down here to the loop and these are the uh, settings that you're going to set in here. Now I've changed these to suit the flashing, duration, the timing, and everything else to suit you know what I want. Uh, the original one comes with different figures in here, and you could change them to anything that you want to. Uh, flash count, uh, random 25 to 40, minimum brightness 10, maximum brightness 255, uh, duration 5 milliseconds to maximum 60 milliseconds, Delay minimum one, uh, maximum 50. Uh, thunder delay random uh, 500 to 3000. So that's a half a second to three seconds. Thunder file. This is the number of files that uh, was in the original one. I used the same thunder files that uh, he published. And that's also on his website that you could download and put on an SD card. Uh, loop delay anywhere between 2015. Uh, 15 seconds, uh, two, 2 seconds and 15 seconds, minimum and maximum delay between each loop. You could adjust that. If you want a shorter duration between the loops, uh, or if you want a larger one, you could adjust these numbers right here. This is uh, just to see what's happened with your on your serial monitor. Uh, this is the four statement flash zero flash less than flash count flash and it steps through all everything on here. It writes to the pin uh, right through there. It prints it out on your serial monitor and that's about it. That's all the instructions right there based on these figures right here. So that's it, plain and simple. The, uh, all the links will be in the description for this, including the video on how to set up the DF player. And uh, like I said before, all this stuff right here, let me highlight this, all the way down to right there. Everything that I have highlighted right there is common in every sketch that you do with the DF player. Now we're going to talk about the project of the strobe light up in the ceiling. This next project is pretty straightforward. We have the 144 LEDs on this strip here. Your strip may be different, but on these RGB LEDs, every color on there, all three colors, are a possible 20 milliamps. So you could have as much as 60 milliamps if it is full brightness on all three. 
So 60 milliamps on 144, so you take 144 times 0.06, and that comes out to 8.64 amps. So it's a good idea to have a power supply that will handle the 8.6 amps. So what I have here is a 5 volt 10 amp power supply and it's just a you know just a, a a larger wall wart you know you plug it in and you have the barrel connector on this end now what you want to take into consideration is like i said on the other one if you're if you have if you're connecting this to your computer you want to remove this jack right here or this plug right here that goes to the 5 volts and the reason for that is you don't want to be putting the 5 volts in from the power supply and from the USB connector at the same time. You have a ground on here, you have to have a ground on here and on there. And right here, this is your data pin number 6. So what you can do is connect your power supply right here. And we're going to hook that up. So that's what we have there. Now, if you have a 12 volt one here, you'll have to do this a little bit different. You'll have to put your five volt on the VCC pin. You would have to put this over here on the VCC. And what that will do, it'll take the 12 volts from over here and convert that into five volts to operate your Arduino Uno. Now let's go over the code for the strobe. Here is the strobe sketch right here. The first thing you're going to have to do is include the FELS LED library. And if you don't know how to do that, there is a video out that shows you how to do that. Installing libraries, how to do uh, the basic things in Arduino. I have a video for that, so I'll leave a link in the description. The number of LEDs that you're going to be using, I'm using the whole strip, so it's at 144. You could change that number depending on how many LEDs. You could cut that strip in half. You could cut it down to one LED. You could add another strip to get uh, as many LEDs as you want. Uh, if you add more LED strips to it, make sure that you apply the power in between the strips instead of on one end because if you put it on one end the last LED on the second strip or a number of those LEDs on the second strip will be a little bit dimmer so put the power in the center of your uh, entire strip. Uh, the pin that you're connecting to is pin number six. I put this right here to identify what sketch that I'm using in there. So whenever I hook up my Arduino Uno, I could uh, put on a serial monitor and it'll show up what sketches on that uh, particular Arduino Uno. Right here, uh, you identify everything. This is the, the loop that you're going to use right here. Strobe X. OXFF, this is hex, OXFF, OXFF. That basically right there is the byte for red, green, and blue, which you can see right here. These three figures here, 30, 30, and 1,000, that's the strobe count, the flash delay, and the end pause. You could change these around to change how many times it's going to flash how many how much of a delay is in between each one of the flashes and how much of a pause is between the entire cycle and this is the for loop that that takes you through that and the other functions are right down here that are in that for loop all of this except for this void loop right here is common in every one of the uh, examples that I'm going to uh, provide you in the description. This right here changes the colors of the LEDs and the patterns of the LEDs. All of this right here loops you through the entire cycle. So all of this right here stays the same along with 
all of this up here. So whenever you want to change the color, you just change this part right in here. And there are several different uh, sketches uh, available in the li in not the libraries, but in the uh, the group of sketches that I uh, provide for you on here from a web page that I got this from. So that's all there is to it, plain and simple. Just this right here executes these functions right here. Another good thing is I'll be able to put the same program for the strobe and I'll put this backlighting on there also through Wi-Fi and I'll be able to control it through my cell phone. I'm going to end this up with a few of the patterns available on these LED strips.